So, we'll carry on from where we left off. It was kind of a success. I'm not going to say it was perfect. I think I dribbled on a bit too long. It was too much of me talking and rabbling on about a few things. I want to make sure that I don't do that in this one. I'm going to be straight to the point. I'm going to give the information that needs to be given. And then other than that, we're just going to keep plowing into it, going to keep the time lapses going, show you how I'm building up the character, of the mini me of myself. And we're going to continue, so this is where we were left off last time. I've managed to kind of build out my, my jawline, which is a bit elongated. Working on the ears today. tip when you're making ears, make sure you roll out both balls first, then you've got exactly the same size for the left and right ear. Just makes life ten times easier. Always good to look back at your reference photo to see how it's looking, whether you're actually getting the proportions and the, the details right. If, if you're not quite, there's a, my jawline here, I kind of wanted it to go in a bit before the ears came out. It's not quite doing that, I reckon it's something that I might be able to do by sanding a few bits down and just creating it like that and, and smoothing out after. I'm not worried about it for now. Now we're going to work on my ridiculously huge nose. You might have seen me doing this quite a lot. I wet my finger. It just it makes it easier to smooth the clay out. You could use Vaseline if you wanted. I think it gets a little bit too gloopy and then you end up with Vaseline all over your model and you get finger wet it, simple as that. You can see how much easier it is to manipulate the model now that we've baked certain parts of it, it just makes it so much easier. I always do this. I get so enthralled in what I'm doing, I forget I've got a cup of coffee here. It's going cold. it's time I introduce some of the tools that I use. I haven't used any yet because I've not really needed to but I am starting to get into the detail for the nose so let's show you some of them. Okay, the trusty one that I use all the time is from a shop. It's based in Manchester. It's called Fed Alders. 
and this is it's like a it's just a very soft rubber end and it is absolutely perfect for smoothing out bits of bits of clay. I'm gonna use it now just to start manipulating and just smoothing in bits of the details. It's it's great. Gets you that detail. Still wet it to help smooth it, but I can get right into the detail. And what I'm not doing is I'm not stabbing in with like fingernails and making imprints because it's rubber. It's nice and soft. It's just moving off, and it, it's, it's it's smoothing out, and it's not putting any imprints in anywhere. It's a great little tool. You can get that from Fred Alders. I'll put description below. Right, I'm getting over the nose. Uh, I think I'm almost ready to, to do another bake. Great tool, household objects, find them. If you think you can use it, use it. This is fantastic because the end of it is perfect for the ears, for the insides of the ears. We can smooth the insides of the ears out later, we can use a Dremel and sand down inside. There are so many things that you can do with this model or this head once it's dried and once you've baked it. You can, as I've said before, you can sand it, you can cut into it, you can add more to it, you can use a Dremel to drill holes into it, you can do so much. But what it means is you have a perfectly formed head that isn't really going to move or change uh, shape when you animate. You, you lose a lot of control as in squash and stretch and things like that that you can do with it but if you're just doing a, a funny character that I'm doing this way is a perfect way to do it in my opinion. This is going into bake back shortly. Back. Now this is where we need to be really careful because, as I've said in the previous video, these ears haven't been manipulated out, so that's because it's going to get cast in resin eventually, but at this very moment in time, they could be quite delicate. If we knot that, the ear could snap off. We have to be very careful of that, but eventually when it's all been moulded and redone in plastic, we won't worry about it. This is the only time now where you've really got to be careful. I think I'm at a stage now where I just want to give it a bit of a sand down and, and see where we're at, see if there is any extra bits of detail I want to add in. This could very well be it. Um, obviously got to put the hair on. Now then, if you've ever been to B&Q or whatever department store that you have where you are, you'll have noticed that you can get what's called wet and dry sandpaper. This wet and dry sandpaper is absolutely perfect for sanding down and smoothing out your models. You can go for a, a rougher, harder one that will take a lot more off, but when you're finishing it, you're trying to smooth it all down, it needs to be wet and dry. And if you sand too much off, just add more on, bake it, simple as that.
got some stronger sandpaper here and that's just to take a little bit more out of the uh, out the side of the ear just before we get to the ears. Once it's uh, been turned into resin, all of these weird scratches and odd things that you're seeing where you've stuck ears on and stuff, um, which might be a bit of discoloration from your fingers and, and that, um, it won't be there. You'll be amazed. We're getting there. 